For over 25 years, SanDisk has been redefining the possibilities of storage. That's why enterprise and hyperscale data centers, as well as leading manufacturers of smartphones, tablets, and PCs, rely on SanDisk. To them, we're peace of mind. Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm ECN Editor Casey Panetta, and on this week's episode, the world's first augmented reality diving mask, a drone that could save your life, and a solar and wind-powered car. Development is well underway on the Scubus S, a diving mask that integrates a flashlight, video camera, a heads-up display, and a diver-to-diver -diver communication system into its waterproof housing. Not only will this stylish mask make diving more fun, it will also make it safer. There's a built-in HD action cam with a lens that offers a 135-degree angle of view. That's a lot of C in one video. <laughs> Still photos can also be taken at 12 megapixel resolution and you can store up to 16 gigabytes of stuff. Flip on your LED flashlight also included in the Scuba S, but don't go deeper than 130 feet as that's the max. Look out your right eye to see the heads up display which has all of your digital info in view at all times. This includes the time, how long you've been underwater, a depthometer, and the water temperature. Want to chat with your fellow divers? You can do that too thanks to the underwater acoustic wave propagation which gets your messages through. Acoustic wave communication has proven effective in submarine communications, but it's limited in small device such as this. The maximum range will be around 328 feet and data rates are slow. And don't get too excited just yet. Voice, audio, and text messaging is not available. The wrist-worn controller gives you access to the Scuba's chat menus and other available functions. You can select from around 20 pre-programmed messages such as emergency, help me now, or take picture of me. No pricing for the mask is available yet, but word on the street is there will be a couple different options and hopefully colors. When we think of drones, we've come to expect either soulless killing machines, toys for hobbyists, or an invasion of our privacy. We've never thought of them as life-saving miracle workers, but that's exactly what a Dutch-based student unveiled last week. Belgian engineering graduate Alex Momon introduced what he termed the ambulance drone, a flying defibrillator that can reach heart attack victims or other patients in need much faster than its human counterparts. Momont noted that around 800,000 people suffer a cardiac arrest in the European Union every year, and only about 8% survive, mainly due to the inadequate response time. Emergency services reach their targets within about 10 minutes, while brain death occurs within 4 to 6 minutes. But the ambulance drone can fly it up to 60 miles per hour and reach a patient within a 12 square kilometer zone inside of a minute, greatly increasing the chances of survival. With six propellers and the ability to carry a four kilogram load, the ambulance drone pinpoints emergency calls and uses GPS to reach its target. Of course, the drone isn't autonomous, so a companion operator would need to walk a good Samaritan through the defibrillator using an onboard camera. Momon has already attracted some interest in its creation, which will run about $19,000 each to eventually become a jack of all medical trades, able to tote a number of different pieces of life-saving medical equipment or silver bullets. If you're looking for a car of the future, the Mercedes-Benz Vision G-Code is worth a look. Before you get too excited, the G-Code is just a concept car created from a vehicle study, but it's still got some great ideas. The design is pretty futuristic with a display on the grill that changes depending on whether the car is parked or driving in sports, eco, or drive mode. It also has the latest driver assistance systems, including 360 degree monitoring of the surroundings via 3D cameras, radar, infrared scanner, GPS data, and an exchange of large volumes of data with the traffic infrastructure and other vehicles in the vicinity. The air conditioning system, designed specifically for those concerned about the pollution in some Asian cities, cleans incoming air via photosynthetic emission scrubbing prior to ionizing the air. This ensures the air in the car is free of particulates and allergens. Plus, the hydrogen synthesis process for the drive management system supplies even more oxygen, which is then routed to the cab. The turbocharged combustion engine is designed to run on hydrogen, which is great for the environment in and of itself, but this car has an added environmentally friendly feature. The paint, which has a multivoltaic silver finish, acts as both a solar cell and can be charged electrostatically by wind. This includes wind while the car is stationary or wind created by the car's movement. The collected energy is used for the methane and hydrogen synthesis. Even though it's just a concept car designed for a city that's 7,000 miles away from me, it's still pretty cool. That's all for this week's video. Be sure to check in with us on Facebook and Twitter and view past episodes at ecnmag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta and this has been your Engineering Update.